Okay, 4.5, problems in 3D. What we need to do here is this, use the sign law to solve problems in three dimensions. Now, in this example, we use students in the classroom to demo this. We had someone at the top of the desk. We had someone at the bottom of the desk. We had someone standing out in the field and one more person standing out in the field. What I'm going to do is a combination of what happened in the class. So, a surveyor is on one side of a river, on the other side is a cliff of unknown height, and so on. I'm sure you can all read this, and you can see the information and the drawing given. Now, let's move this forwards and look at the next step. So, here we go with the same diagram. But what we're going to do is use students in the classroom. We had Andrew, who is on the desk, Melanie, who is at the bottom of the desk. We had Jessica out in the field, and she's our surveyor. And Skyla was out there helping Jessica determine all these values. The whole goal behind this is to find out from Andrew to Melanie how high the cliff is. All right. So we know that the distance between Jessica and Skyla is 150 meters. The angle at Jessica is 51 degrees. That's the angle that Jessica measures from herself to Melanie and then from herself to Skyla. So again, from Melanie to Jessica to Skyla is the angle 51 degrees. Next, we have the angle at 62 degrees, which is the measurement from Melanie to Skyla to Jessica. So basically, Skyla took a measurement from Skyla to Jessica and Skyla to Melanie, so that the angle there is 62 degrees. Next step is that Jessica is able to measure the angle of elevation that she needs to do in order to look up at Andrew, who for our demo purposes was on was standing at on top of the desk. So we have a 32 angle of elevation. Now, what we need to do is determine some information. In the triangle of Jessica, Skyla, and Melanie, we know two angles, and we could use the third angle to be able to solve information in the other triangle. So using SATT, now the way to remember it, some of you understand it as some of the angles in a triangle theorem, which is a really long way, or better yet, the supplementary angle triangle theorem. Because supplementary angle means all the angles add up to 180 degrees. In a triangle, all the angles add up to 180 degrees. So this particular four-letter acronym actually makes sense. So that we using the information, we can find the angle of SMJ, or Skyla Melanie Jessica, so this angle right here, folks, right inside here, to be 180 minus 51 minus 62. And that turns out to be 67 degrees. So now we've determined the angle for Melanie between uh, at Melanie to Jessica and Melanie to Skyla. So that angle is 67 degrees. Now, how's that going to help us? Well, we can use the Melanie angle with the Melanie side to determine the side from Jessica to Melanie. So that's 62 degrees to this side. Why we need this particular side, the Jessica to Melanie, is because that's going to help us in the right angle situation to find out that the side length from Andrew to Melanie, which is really what the goal we're looking for. So sine of 62 over S, S being the side that's across from Skyla, also known as the side between Jessica and Melanie, so the side across from Skyla, the side that connects Jessica to Melanie, is equal to sine 67 over 150. This is using sine law, folks. So we find out that once we cross multiply, that S is equal to 100, sorry, let's do all of that. So don't forget, we can't touch the calculator. I do not want you touching the calculator until we are done the question. In this case, 
we find out that S is equal to 143.8798, and this is units, so we're looking at meters. So little s is equal to 143.8798. Now, our, you can look at your answer to see if it makes sense. Note 67 has a side length of 150. So 67 degrees is the largest angle, has a side of 150. 62 is slightly smaller than 67. So the idea is that 62 degrees, the side opposite that, should be smaller than 150. Is it? Well, yes, it is, folks. All right, so we need to find now side J. We can use tangent. Now, some of you are probably going, how come we can use tangent? Well, look at this particular triangle. This triangle right here has a right angle triangle. We know side S, and we know this angle. We need side J. Side J is opposite side s is adjacent so we're going to use tangent of 32 is equal to j over s which we found find the value of j and we set up the tan 32 over 1 so that we can cross multiply i set this up this way so it's guaranteed that regardless of where the variable is you're able to solve for the letter j Turns out J is equal to 89.9061, 89.9061 meters. Therefore, the height of the cliff is 89.9061 meters. Now, if the question asks you to round, this is where you would round. You would only round in the therefore statement. All right, so we have the other example. And I just want to show this to you. This was the other class. So it was Timothy, Nicole, Jan, and Andy. Same expression, same answer. The solution is the same. We're just looking at different people that were doing the demo in the class. Next one. Let's look at this question. This is the question that involves the separation of three people in the classroom. And those were... Alex, Jason, and Elizabeth. Alex, Jason, and Elizabeth are all separated by a certain amount of uh, meters from each other. Jason, what we need to do is find the largest angle. How come we're choosing Jason's angle to be the largest? One of the rules to remember is that the largest angle is opposite the largest side. So, we need to find angle Jason in order to solve the problem. Angle Jason, we need to use the cosine law to f solve an angle. So, set up cosine law, so it's j squared is equal to a squared plus e squared minus 2ae cosine j. What you do is move 2ae cosine j over to the other side, so you have 2ae cosine j is equal to a squared plus e squared minus j squared. Once you do that, you can divide both everything by 2ae so that you will have everything by 2ae so that you will have cosine j is equal to a squared plus e squared minus j squared all over 2ae. Now, we need to find the inverse, because whenever we're looking for an angle, we need to use the inverse. But instead of writing the letters, what I'm going to do is plug in the numbers. The beauty of isolating first is the fact that we don't have to work with nasty numbers. Right before we solve, we can then plug in the letters to represent that represents the numbers to find our final answer, which is... 81.5662 degrees. So saw angle J is e equal to eight, around 81.6 degrees. All right. Another example would be if we had to find the smallest angle. And in this case, who would be the smallest angle? The smallest angle would be Sneet. And we would have to determine the value of the smallest angle. To do that, we look at this whole problem using 
the cosine law, we solve for the angle. And it turns out the angle for SNEET is equal to 46.6641 degrees. So it's just another example that was done in class so that you know how to work these problems. All right, folks, have a numerical evening. Take care.